Hey YouTubers, welcome back to my video series of small engines questions and answers for Friday, November 19th and today's video number 23. So I'll just show you a few snowblowers around the shop there before I start answering questions. Here's a Yarnman snowblower by MTD. This is actually a nice snowblower. It's pretty rugged actually when you look at the frame and all that. It's got heated handlebars here. And it's got an 11 horsepower overhead valve Briggs engine. It's got the tilt chute. Very nice. This here is an old Toro 524 that I just repaired. This snowblower here needed a lot of work. So you're going to be seeing some videos on this snowblower in the next month or so. I just have to edit them and all that. And here's a nice Honda snowblower on tracks. And it's even got an onboard battery so you don't have to plug in the electric starter into an electrical outlet to start it basically just turn the key right here and she'll go the honda there is actually my favorite snowblower it's not that big in the front but i have a neighbor that's got one and they really blow really far it's the cadillac of snowblowers in my opinion it's got a powered shoot adjuster Anyways, I'm just changing the oil on the Honda there. That's about it, so that's what I've been up to. Before I get started today, I just want to make a correction from my previous Q&A video that a YouTuber brought to my attention. I mentioned in there that the Champion RJ19LM cross-referenced to an NGK B6S. Well, that's incorrect. Actually, the RJ19LM cross-references with NGK BR2LM. The NGK B6S spark plug cross-references with the Champion J8C that you will find on older snowblowers. Now my first question today, somebody saw me wearing these gloves here in a previous video. I wear these and also the nitro gloves, the blue ones that you see me wearing sometimes for health reasons and also because I'm a caregiver and if I have to go in the house to look after my wife, I don't need to go in with dirty hands. I just pull the gloves off and my hands are clean. Well, these gloves here, I've been wearing them for quite a while. And I'll just show you what brand they are. They're made in the USA, so I'm sure you can find them in a store near you. So here's the gloves up close. They're called Best. Zorbit. It's made by Zorbit, made in the USA. There's the part number for the glove. Part number, I guess. Anyways, you can go to their website, bestglove.com. And I really like these gloves because they're tough. They're almost like a nitrile, I think that's what it is. And what I do is I buy a size that's really tight on my hands because over time they stretch a bit. And if there's no loose in your fingers, it's a lot easier to work on small things like carburetors and stuff like that. They only last for so long. They do eventually get oil impregnated, but that takes quite a while to happen. I buy them by the dozen in a bag like that for around 50 bucks, 40 to 50 bucks. You can buy them at Burfasco here in Ontario, Canada. So if you're not sure where to buy them, just go on their website, bestglove.com, and you can find a dealer near you. Highly recommend these gloves. Now my next question, a YouTuber has a Husqvarna chainsaw, it's a 266 SE, and he's wondering what the SE means at the end of the model number. I think it means special edition. I'm not sure, but I've seen Husqvarna chainsaws with special edition written right on them. Sometimes they may have little added features on them and that's why they call them special edition. Now the same YouTuber that has a Husqvarna 266 is asking me if it's normal to have stress cracks in the clutch. This is a clutch from a similar chainsaw. The 266 will have a clutch similar to this or different with three springs in it. So the answer is no, it's not normal to have stress cracks inside your clutch or on these parts here. What could happen is it could eventually fly apart and pieces will fly everywhere and then it's going to be totally shot. If your clutch has stress cracks, you should replace it immediately. Now the YouTuber also says that his clutch has a lot of play in it, kind of like this here. I haven't seen his saw, but I would imagine it's as bad as this or worse. What that can mean is that the roller bearing between the clutch drum and the shaft is worn out. And remember when you remove your clutch, it's a left-handed thread and there's an arrow pointing the way you should remove it. You can use an impact wrench to remove this or put a rope in the cylinder to stop the motor from turning. Much easier with an impact wrench, but not everybody has one of those. 
So there's a bearing inside here. That's the bearing I'm talking about. Once you remove this part of the clutch, make sure to note if there's any washers here so you put it back in the same order. Now just pull the clutch drum out and the rim sprocket will come out. The bearing is in there and usually you can buy just the roller bearing like that. You can try replacing this bearing first which goes right here and that may solve your problem. If that doesn't solve it you may have to replace the clutch drum here as well with it. Once you're done doing that just reinstall the rim sprocket. Make sure you put it the same direction that you took it out. You'll notice that there's open holes on one side so I'm just going to put it back the way it was. Then you would stick it back on like that. Then you would put your clutch back on. So I'm sure if you try that, you're going to resolve the problem with your loose clutch like that. And make sure to replace that cracked clutch. Also, another question I often get is, how often should I change the oil in my snowblower? Well, a good rule is to replace it once a year. So basically, at the start of every season, when you do your maintenance on your snowblower, replace the oil. And I use 5W30 in my snowblowers. Some other YouTubers use 5W20, that's good too, and you can also use synthetic oil as well. If you replace your oil at the beginning of the season and then during the season you notice that the oil is changing color like going gray or a creamish color that means a bit of water or snow got in the oil and it's changing the color of the oil so you should replace the oil again if that's the case. Now my last question for today someone's asking me are all trimmer clutches left hand thread? Well the answer to that is no. So as we just saw in the chainsaw here these are left-handed thread but on a trimmer here which I have apart this is from a still FS46 it is not reverse thread and it's even written off in an arrow pointing the way you should remove it and it's a right-handed thread which is your usual threads now the reason why it's threaded that way on the trimmer is because the engine when it runs turns this way counterclockwise so by screwing in the clutch clockwise it tightens itself when the motor's turning and that's what you want. If it was a left-handed thread, what would happen is when it would be running, the clutch would come undone because the threads would be in the same direction. Whereas on the chainsaw, it turns this way the engine clockwise, so the threads have to be left-handed, so when it turns, it tightens up the clutch by itself. So usually it's going to be written off and there will be an arrow showing you the direction. So before I close the video today, I want to thank everybody for sending donations. I also want to thank everybody who comments on my videos and who regularly watch them. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.